Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. It was a sunny summer morning, and there were bright rays that penetrated the room through the partially open window blinds. A young woman was lying in a cozy bed when she gradually awakened from a deep sleep. Lost in her thoughts, the girl smiled from happiness as she heard the pitter-patter of her two beloved dogs entering the room and hopping onto the bed. Good morning, my sweeties. Max, Leo, how did you sleep? The adorable little dogs yapped and wagged their tails joyfully. This place and time were a rare corner of paradise when she could allow herself to forget about worries and relish in the tranquility, peace, and wonderful company of her companions. But suddenly, glancing hurriedly at the clock on the bedside table, Magnolia exclaimed, I overslept. She realized in a second that today she had an important event planned that had somehow slipped her mind, her own wedding. Time was flying unforgivingly. Magnolia swiftly jumped out of bed, not even giving herself a moment to extend her morning rest. Her mind shifted into work mode, and she began to formulate a plan of action to make it to her own wedding on time. The household staff had the day off, she made this decision herself, but the housemaid had still prepared everything. Magnolia had intended to spend the morning alone, reflecting on life, and perhaps shedding a tear, considering that in this joyful and significant moment, she wouldn't have a single family member around her. First, she decided to style her hair into loose, large curls, to which she would attach a delicate veil. She skillfully brushed her face with soft strokes, applying light makeup. She knew precisely how to enhance her natural beauty without spending too much time in front of the mirror. Without hesitation, she slipped into beautiful shoes adorned with delicate silver embellishments on the toes, nearly tripping over in her haste. She slipped into her dress and effortlessly zipped it up. She had rehearsed for this moment. How could she have overslept? Although she had never noticed such a tendency before. Rushing out of the house, Magnolia spotted a chauffeur's car already parked by the door, and she wanted to make it to the wedding on time. Quickly loading her essentials into the car, she started the engine and sped off, despite the lack of time. It was clear she had missed breakfast, but it was a trivial sacrifice to be where she needed to be, with her beloved and the guests preparing to celebrate their special day. Once again, Magnolia thought about how the floor-length silk dress had been a splendid and right choice. It embodied elegance and grace. It perfectly accentuated her feminine curves, creating an image of incredible beauty and sophistication. The dress's simple design aimed for perfection in its simplicity. The length added a special charm to Magnolia's appearance. Silk was the material that made the dress delicate and refined. It caressed her skin, creating a sense of comfort, and its luster and silkiness highlighted the nobility of her image. The dress also paired beautifully with the accessories, which only heightened its elegance. Magnolia had chosen a veil to complement her look, creating an atmosphere of romance and high style that made her resemble a beautiful princess, a true queen of her day. Wearing it, she looked simply magnificent, and she was confident she could capture admiring glances for one day of the year. Meanwhile, at the church, it was bustling and noisy. All the invited guests had gathered and couldn't wait for the celebration to begin. Here's our beloved groom, exclaimed the relatives as Roberto stepped out of the car. At last, you'll become a married man, his friends patted him on the shoulders. Yes, I'm truly fortunate. Thank you all for the congratulations and support, Roberto replied somewhat reservedly and reluctantly. We're very proud of you, dear, said an elderly aunt, who also came over to congratulate Roberto. This day means a lot, not just for you, but for all of us. After all, we're welcoming a daughter into our family, the relatives continue to rejoice. Thank you, Roberto nodded, trying to leave everyone and finally call Magnolia. Roberto glanced at his watch and panicked. Magnolia was already an hour late, and he began to worry that she might have changed her mind about marrying him. Everything had happened so spontaneously and quickly that he was shocked at the fact that the girl agreed to marry him, but her phone was turned off. Roberto. Look at him, he's so in love, his friends continued to tease the groom. Well, how could it be otherwise? Magnolia is the most wonderful and beautiful girl in the whole world. 
I'm so happy that life brought us together. We wish your love to last forever. Guests had already poured champagne and filled their glasses. As the weather was really hot, some people were beginning to feel tipsy. Thank you for the well wishes. Roberto turned away from his relatives and rolled his eyes. He had grown tired of it all. May your I do today mark the beginning of a happy and bright life filled with love and understanding. Well, where's Magnolia? To whom are we going to shout cheers? Some of the men jokingly exclaimed. I'm trying to call her. Roberto held the phone to his ear again. Well then, it's time to go into the church. May this day be memorable and forever imprinted in our hearts. Has Magnolia arrived? Outside the church in the reception area, there was noise and excitement, and the air was filled with joy and merriment. Laughter, loud conversations, whispers, congratulations, and joyful cheers from friends and relatives echoed from all directions. The clinking of glasses and the sounds of champagne being poured filled the hall. They all merged into an indistinct background sound, periodically punctuated by bursts of even greater happiness and excitement. Everyone laughed, applauded, smiled sincerely, and toasted with the glasses. Roberto was surrounded by all of this, but he kept dialing Magnolia's number. Yet, the phone continued to indicate that the number was unavailable. Meanwhile, Magnolia was stuck in traffic on the road. She was almost at the church and had been trying to turn on her phone, which had inconveniently run out of battery. Nervously tapping her fingers on the steering wheel, she fiddled with the phone in her hands and tossed it into the glove compartment out of frustration. Outside the cool cabin, it felt like the earth was melting from the heat. Magnolia let out a desperate sigh, but there was nowhere to go. She had to wait. All the guests who had come to their wedding were dressed in bright and festive attire, which further emphasized their joyful mood. Together, it created an atmosphere of happiness, genuine delight, and mutual satisfaction. Only Roberto and his mother, Teresa, were dissatisfied with the situation. Everyone already had drinks, snacked a bit on fruits and sandwiches, and began sharing jokes, amusing stories, and well wishes for the couple. The surroundings were infused with a vibrant and celebratory atmosphere that had become an integral part of the wait for the wedding festivities. Well, you're finally here, son. Where's Magnolia? Why is she so late? Has she changed her mind? Teresa immediately bombarded her son with questions as soon as they stepped aside. I'm trying to get in touch with her, Roberto nervously replied to her and began fidgeting with the bow tie on his neck. You know, I never approved of that girl, and frankly, I don't understand what you see in her or why you continue to defend her. You don't love her, do you? Teresa said angrily. At that moment, Magnolia rushed into the church, panting and froze in shock near the wall that was her support for that moment. Mom, I'm begging you, don't start again. Someone might overhear. Maybe I'll grow to love her. Why don't you consider that possibility? Roberto retorted, visibly upset, and received a swat on the hand from his mother for touching his suit. Love? And what does that even mean? She's just chasing after you to elevate her social standing. But she's got money to spare. Let her share. I don't believe she genuinely loves you. You're in the same position. Hearing these words from her future mother-in-law, Magnolia nearly collapsed as her legs were unsteady. Mom, don't speak like that. She's wonderful, just a little naive, Roberto scoffed. Wonderful? Is that because you're so blinded by her deceitful charm that you refuse to see the truth? I've heard about how she deceived her former boyfriends. She's a rich, spoiled brat. Well, we'll get back at her, Teresa maliciously chuckled, not bothering to hide her anger or even speak softly. Mom, that's enough. I'm just worrying about you, Teresa's tone immediately changed as she spoke about her son, about your future with this woman. How will you live with her? Will our plan work out? How can I not worry about my son's future? Thanks, Mom, Roberto replied sarcastically. I can't wait for you to start acting, just not directly. Be cautious. Gain her trust, 
just as we planned and rehearsed. I think we have a great opportunity to get her huge inheritance if she sells her house and you, along with her, buy another one, a few apartments, and gain access to her accounts. You'll withdraw gradually and stash it away. Teresa even began to rub her hands in anticipation, while Magnolia didn't know how to catch her breath. She was running out of air and couldn't believe her ears. Mom, this sounds incredibly cunning, Roberto laughed in response, speaking loudly as well. Listen, I found out she's a complete orphan, and she inherited the family mansion as the sole heir. There are no other siblings. How lucky we are. I don't see any guarantee that she'll actually give me access to her bank accounts, Roberto pondered in response. What if we create a situation where she'll be forced to do so? Teresa suggested. Put pressure on her. I taught you, after all. We'll decide later about the divorce. For instance, we can hire an actor who will pretend to be an ex-boyfriend and play the lover. We'll even demand compensation for emotional distress. I hope she really is as naive as I got it, Roberto chuckled. Stop fooling around. His mother gave the now amused Roberto a light slap on the back of his head. We're talking about a massive amount of money that could be ours. This is an opportunity we should seize. Your life will be much better now, and our family will have opportunities we could only dream of. Aren't you interested in that? We're talking about financial stability for our family. We can buy a better apartment, find more advantageous accommodations, and improve our standard of living. Upon hearing these cruel words, Magnolia began to cry. She hadn't even been considered a person. If anyone is going to get rich, it's me. Then give me control over the family mansion so I can do what's necessary, and you'll inherit regardless, the mother assured her son. I'm so worried. Where is she? What if nothing works out? Roberto became nervous once again. You've always been too gentle and kind, Roberto, but empty mercy won't help us succeed. I got it. Stop getting on my nerves. Think about the future of your family. We need to live comfortably. You want to secure a better life for yourself, don't you? Magnolia sat down on the floor. The bouquet of delicate peonies slipped from her hands and a few petals scattered on the ground. The pain she felt in that moment was incredibly deep and penetrating. At first, her heart seemed to shatter into a thousand fragments. Desperation and disappointment engulfed every fiber of her being. It was as if someone had ripped away the bright castle that she built herself, leaving only a pit of hopelessness and betrayal. The sense of deceit and betrayal caused sharp physical pain in her chest, as if something was squeezing and pressing on her heart. Her soul began to ache, as if her uniqueness and feelings had been utterly destroyed. She began to doubt her ability to trust anyone and felt that the whole world had become treacherous and dangerous, plunging into dark hues. In an instant, Magnolia lost her faith in love. She felt alone and abandoned once again, just like when she lost all her relatives. She didn't think she could survive this again. Her trust was utterly undermined. She was needed only for money, not for herself, not for her soul and heart, not for her love and care. She realized that all her dreams of a happy marriage and family had been shattered into pieces by lies. Instead, there was emptiness and uncertainty about the future. What was she supposed to do in this situation? This terrible pain was indescribable. It dealt her a heavy scar that would take a very long time to heal and leave an unforgettable mark on her heart and mind. Hey, Magnolia, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? Girls, come here quickly, one of Ariel's friends exclaimed, kneeling in front of Magnolia. I can't talk, Magnolia replied, stuttering. She buried her face in her friend's shoulder, leaving mascara stains on her dress. I'm sorry don't care about it what happened the friend stroked magnolia's head tell us what happened i don't understand anything vitalia another friend helped her stand up and led her to the couch we can help support you you know that ricarda said sitting down next to her and taking magnolia's hands in hers i 
I just can't tell you. It's so awful. Magnolia burst into tears even stronger. Magnolia, we're your best friends. We'll always be here to support you in any situation. Tell us what happened. Ariel hugged her friend tightly. We can't help if we don't know what happened, Ricarda summed up. I. I just found out that Roberto and his dreadful mother want to take all my money away. Magnolia looked at them intensely. Oh, what a nightmare. The friends exclaimed. Magnolia, that's horrible. I can't even imagine what it's like for you. Dear, we're here for you. Ariel started wiping the streaks of mascara from Magnolia's face. We'll be by your side to support you. You deserve so much better. Just tell us what to do. If you want, we can cancel the wedding and the guests. They'll find a way to cope with it, she continued. Thank you, girls, Magnolia replied with a sob. I'm just too scared and hurt. I don't know. Running away in fear isn't my style, as you know. Of course, you're worried. Let's think everything through. Are you implying to get back at him? Ricarda smirked. Exactly. We need to do it. He's a crybaby. I told you, and his mother, Vitalia, stopped. And let these men know that we're not just ordinary, that we value our friendship highly, Ricarda added. Thank you, girls. I can't imagine my life without you. Thank you for being here with me now, Magnolia replied, feeling a bit calmer. We're always here, Magnolia. Always, her friends reassured her. I can't believe Roberto and his mother are trying to take your inheritance away from you. Tell us more. We need to be ready for anything, Ricarda said. Calm down, Ricarda. Tell us all the details. Perhaps we can figure out the situation, Ariel gently urged. Well, you know, I inherited everything. I just finished dealing with the paperwork. It's quite substantial, the house, valuables, and money. Roberto must have found out I'm an orphan. But neither he nor his mother ever showed much interest. So, did he suddenly decide to take your inheritance to get the house and money for himself? Ariel asked in shock. They want to convince me to sell the house and, together with Roberto, buy apartments while they'll take the money from an account I opened for him. Maybe they think you're too young to understand stuff about finances. It's good that your friend is a financial analyst, right? Vitalia chuckled. We're all very grateful to you, the friends complimented the girl. But that's just an assumption. Let's go talk to him about all this now, Ricarda suggested. No. They're cunning little bugs, and I'll be just as cunning. Will you help me? Magnolia exclaimed immediately. Isn't that dangerous? Won't they take advantage of the situation when Roberto becomes your husband? If anything, Salvador Navarro will sort it out. After all, he handled all the legal matters and was my parents' lawyer for many years. I'll tear that scoundrel apart. Ricarda started to get agitated again. Calm down, Ricarda. Of course, we'll help. Right, girls? Ariel stated confidently. Thank you, girls, for supporting me. I truly need your help. I can't imagine what I would do without you, Magnolia nodded. Come on, stop it. We're always here to help each other, especially in such important moments. Magnolia thanked fate for meeting her best friends back in university. Ariel, Ricarda, and Vitalia had become part of her family. They were amazing girls, each uniquely beautiful and with their own distinct personalities. Ricarda was a bold and adventurous girl. She had a great figure and practiced boxing. Her hair was long, and she had deep blue eyes that sparkled with passion. Her smile caught everyone's attention, and she always embraced her own style, never afraid to stand out from the crowd. Her confidence and energy always infected everyone around her. Ricardo was an entrepreneur. She owned her own brand and had an online store. She made strategic decisions and knew how to manage her team, striving for constant professional development. 
Ariel, on the other hand, was a true beauty with a soft and striking charm. Her beautiful face, with sharp features and blue eyes that seemed as deep as the ocean, always evoked envy. Her long hair shimmered in the sunlight, accentuating her perfect skin. She always looked impeccable, her style was a harmonious blend of elegance and natural beauty. Ariel was a creative soul, well acquainted with art and culture. She positioned herself as an artist and somewhat of a sculptor, dabbled in photography just for herself, and exhibited her paintings in galleries worldwide. Overall, she was quite sought after. She loved theaters, operas, museums, and other cultural institutions. Vitalia, on the other hand, was the most reserved, pragmatic, and realistic of them all. Despite that, she turned out to be a true traveler and a free spirit. With her long chestnut hair and green eyes that shimmered with love for nature, she was incredibly beautiful in every move. She radiated life's energy and optimism. Spending time with her was an unforgettable adventure, full of new discoveries. She was a remarkably intelligent girl. Anyway, there was no wonder. She was a financial analyst working at a major financial institution responsible for analyzing investment opportunities and strategies. She possessed strong skills and an independent character, allowing her to make well-considered, reasoned decisions in the financial field. As for Magnolia herself, as her friends often said, she was the embodiment of elegance and refinement. Her face was expressive and beautiful, radiating a joyful inner glow and charisma. She always took care of her appearance and wore only the best clothes that accentuated her splendid figure. And her radiant smile could blind and inspire anyone. Her composed demeanor and ability to engage in conversation made her the life of any party. Though Magnolia was educated as a lawyer, she couldn't bring herself to work in that field. Her significant inheritance allowed her to engage in charity work. She worked with foundations and organizations that supported art, culture, children's rights, the sick, and animals, and was involved in her parents' own charitable organization. Her fortune allowed her to fund projects supporting medicine, education, art, ecology, and other socially significant initiatives. She also had a pretty good understanding of investments and not only preserved her family's entire capital, but also multiplied it. Magnolia was a modest and well-mannered girl, the epitome of elegance and restraint. She always strived to appear unassuming in her subtle attire, someone who wouldn't attract too much attention. Her manners were impeccable, and she was polite and attentive to everyone in her surroundings. She never flaunted her wealth or attempted to draw attention to herself through her financial status. Her priority was always a modest and determined way of life, filled with genuine relationships and moral values. She realized very early on that prosperity could evoke envy and hatred in some, but she paid no mind to it and didn't let these emotions affect her behavior. She always aimed to be supportive and attentive to friends and family, displaying generosity and kindness in every interaction. Is something wrong? Roberto rushed to the couch. He had been looking for his bride all this time. No. I just overslept. I'm a fool. Shall we go? Magnolia immediately pulled herself together. Roberto hooked her arm, and she noticed a genuine grin on his future mother-in-law's face. Her friends managed to fix her makeup and even improve it. The wedding was proceeding smoothly, just the way Magnolia wanted it. Everything was perfect. However, despite her friend's support, she felt nothing but emptiness inside. What else was this if not true betrayal? The loneliness and sadness that Magnolia, who had inherited a vast fortune after grim and tragic events in her family, had already once experienced shattered her heart, corroded her soul, and seeped into every fiber of her being. The things that money couldn't buy and couldn't replace, human connections, support, and love, were lost. When Magnolia looked around, all she saw was wealth and opulence, but nowhere was there warmth or understanding. Her home, filled with precious objects and luxury items, was filled with deafening silence and indifference, introducing a sense of solitude. Money could buy material possessions, but it couldn't warm her soul, which was seeking light and sincerity. She had to live in a world of emptiness and deceit, surrounded by those who only cared about money. 
So, when she met Roberto, she genuinely thought she had found a kindred spirit. It turned out he was just like the rest. Meanwhile, the marriage celebrant began to congratulate the couple. Dear newlyweds, in every person's life, there are unforgettable days and events. Today is such a day for you, this is the day your family was formed. Roberto looked at Magnolia and smiled. She was holding back tears, knowing that his emotions towards her were insincere. Family is the union of loving people, a voluntary alliance. And before I proceed to register your marriage, I must ask you, is your desire to marry each other sincere, free, and well-considered? The marriage celebrant continued her speech. I ask you to respond, Roberto. Are you ready to take Magnolia as your wife? Yes, Roberto almost shouted, smiling. Magnolia, are you ready to take Roberto as your husband? Yes, Magnolia answered quietly. Considering your mutual consent expressed in the presence of parents, close relatives, and friends, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Magnolia approached the table to sign her name, yet her heart held no trace of joy. Her friends couldn't replace the true love she yearned for so desperately. She had lost everyone she had ever loved, and in the most crucial moment, she found herself devoid of the dearest and most precious people in her life. Even Roberto had betrayed her. Amidst the joyful crowd rushing to congratulate them, her soul felt a profound chill and indifference, intensifying her loneliness. She would gladly have relinquished all her wealth to return to times when the people she loved were by her side, genuinely loving and being loved. Even in the midst of the crowd and the noise, she still felt alone. Strangers, who seemed to genuinely congratulate and hug her, envied her wealth and recognition, yet no one saw the hidden sadness she kept within. The melancholy for every lost moment, every missed opportunity to spend time with loving family members. She was surprised by Roberto and his mother, as she knew that money couldn't bring true happiness. They only served as painful reminders of the losses she had experienced herself. For years, she harbored the desire to find true love and support that couldn't be bought or sold. Roberto kissed her, spun her around, and gifted her flowers, but he seemed like a puppet who hadn't even grasped the consequences of his actions. Magnolia simply wanted to find light in the darkness of her life. She needed tenderness, understanding, and connection to heal the wounds and bring warmth to her melancholic heart. It turned out that her heart was shattered even more. After the ceremony, the solemn procession made its way to Magnolia's country estate. Everything had been prepared to continue the celebration. Tables were covered with white cloths and adorned with a variety of dishes. Candles were lit, live flowers and silk ribbons adorned every corner. Magnolia had spent her entire life in this mansion, loving her spacious and luxurious residence set amidst a beautiful park and garden. It was an architectural masterpiece, combining the essential qualities of comfort and convenience. The building was made of stone and marble, with a spacious terrace where tables for guests were set, providing a magnificent view of the surrounding nature. And it was worth it, gardens with well-kept paths, cozy corners for relaxation, and beautiful fountains. Majestic antique furniture, crystal chandeliers, high ceilings, statues, and canvases inside created an impression of grandeur, as if it were a museum. There were also a library, a study, a billiard room, and a leisure and entertainment gym in the house. Of course, Roberto and his mother had their eyes on all of this. Magnolia realized this too late. The pool, sauna, jacuzzi, all of it seemed so mundane to Magnolia. She never thought that the human mercantile spirit could be so overpowering. As soon as Magnolia and Roberto's car pulled up to the entrance, Max and Leo immediately rushed to her feet. They brought her so much joy and smiles. Both dogs loved to play and never missed a chance to frolic in the yard. Max adored playing with balls and leaping after them, trying to catch them in midair. Leo preferred chasing birds and butterflies, not giving them a chance to escape. Yet it was a gentle dog who wouldn't harm anyone. Max and Leo lived in better conditions than one could only imagine. They had their own beds and plenty of soft, fluffy pillows to ensure their comfort. They were friends, could quarrel with each other, 
but they would fall asleep snuggled up together as it was much warmer. Max and Leo's games and amusements extended beyond just the house and the yard. Magnolia often took them on walks and trips so they could relish new scents and sights. On the beach, Max and Leo would dive into the water, run on the sand, and hide behind dunes. In the mountains, they would traverse trails and savor the fresh air. They always embraced new adventures and uncharted places. Roberto never liked them, and neither did his mother. Whenever the joyful dogs approached, she wanted to shoo them away with her foot, but she noticed the butler looking at her and backed away in annoyance. Magnolia, dear, you look so beautiful today. Your hairstyle is stunning. Teresa exclaimed in admiration as the guests took their seats. Thank you, it's very nice to hear such compliments from you, Magnolia forced a smile. Yes, of course, people should always give compliments to each other. How do you like my dress? Magnolia twirled around. I tried so hard to choose one that would make me look especially good on my wedding day. It's very beautiful, Teresa said, clapping her hands. I wish we could become friends and love each other. Love? Love you? Oh, come on, I already do love you, Teresa began to flatter. I only wish we lived in peace and harmony, Magnolia summed up. Well, we'll probably try, she responded matter-of-factly. For a while, Magnolia gave herself a break from this unpleasant conversation with her mother-in-law and simply started enjoying the wedding dinner. There were exquisite appetizers, fresh salads, light soups, meat, fish, and poultry, combined with exquisite side dishes and sauces. Live music filled the air, a small orchestra played, and then a DJ took the stage so everyone could dance. For those who were tired, cozy resting rooms were prepared. While Roberto enjoyed the congratulations from relatives, Magnolia slipped away to the cool terrace to join her friends. Girls, I can't even describe how upset I am, Magnolia buried her face in her hands. I thought I had found a kindred spirit, a man I had been searching for so long, but it all turned out to be an untruth. He was so caring, attentive, and he always talked about how similar our interests were. What a lie. I still can't believe such people exist. You're smart, as you revealed his deception, Ariel admired. I completely agree with you. People like that don't deserve our time or emotions, Ricarda concurred. I thought I had found the one. But you know what, dear? People can make mistakes and deceive, but that doesn't mean you're not worthy of real love. You deserve a man who will love and cherish you, regardless of money. Have you come up with a plan? Vitalia finally voiced the thoughts of all. No, a saddened Magnolia shook her head. Ariel quickly went to get dessert and coffee, and the girls resumed their discussion. We need to figure out how to get back at them for wanting to take away all her money, a slightly malicious Vitalia declared. But how? The response came from the friends. I'm so tired of them and their persistent advice, their attempts to control every aspect of my life. Magnolia pleaded. You never intended to go on a honeymoon anyway. Tell that hag that you've chosen the most expensive resort of all and let her pester you to go with you. And make a scene. Don't be afraid. Just tell her that you think she's using you to go on a vacation, Ariel sarcastically stated, giving a malicious look towards Teresa, who was eating like she wasn't herself. Excellent. Let's make her see that she could lose everything if she continues her interference and attempts at control, and let's get a firm grip on your Roberto while the old hag backs off, Vitalia continued the thought. He's not mine. Magnolia exclaimed. Sorry, sorry. But you're not mine Roberto also needs to learn a lesson, Ricarda laughed at Roberto, who had slipped on the dance floor. You can propose that he share financial responsibilities and pay for half of the expenses. Try living off his account. And be sure to mock him. He must beg you to give him access to your accounts, and you should ask him to do mean or trivial tasks, like cleaning up after the dogs. He hates them. Or make him clean the entire house. He can't refuse. He needs to win you over. Exactly, exactly. 
You would know how to drive him crazy, the friends began to advise eagerly, pouring champagne into their glasses. Tell him you're short on money right now, invested it in stocks. You'll live off his money for a while, Ricardo winked. Thanks, girls. You're genius. Magnolia smiled for the first time that evening, feeling that she wasn't alone in this chaos. Magnolia felt a deep sense of gratitude and relief, realizing once again that she had friends she could trust in difficult times. She knew that they would support and understand her. Magnolia always shared her thoughts and emotions with her friends. She felt a deep connection with them. She had a strong desire to express her gratitude for always being there and listening to her. She valued every moment spent with them, aware that these girls had made her life meaningful and happier. And Magnolia truly hoped she could be the same kind of support for her friends, aspiring to become just as reliable emotional pillars for them. Ariel, Vitalia, and Ricardo were always on her side. There was no challenge they couldn't overcome together. It gave her at least a little peace of mind. Struggling to force a smile and sipping her drink, Magnolia endured the festivities, and throughout the entire dinner, she diligently monitored Roberto to get as drunk as a skunk, and it worked. He was so drunk when he entered the bedroom that he immediately collapsed to sleep. There was no sign of any intimacy with him. Magnolia didn't delay her innocent revenge for long, and literally the next day she informed Teresa that she intended to spend a fortune on the honeymoon. As expected, her mother-in-law wanted to join the newlyweds. Oh, someday for sure, but shouldn't Roberto and I spend the honeymoon together, just the two of us? Do you not trust me? Magnolia feigned surprise, placing her hand on her chest. I don't know why you're thinking this way. I just worry about my son. You've only recently become a part of our family, and I want to be sure he's happy. Teresa raised her chin proudly. Perhaps I shouldn't have it all, then? Magnolia chuckled. Fine. Maybe I've gone too far with my suspicions. Teresa's tone immediately changed, but you also have to admit there have been moments when you haven't shown your best side. Really? Magnolia was surprised. Well, maybe not. Teresa shrugged immediately. There's no point in continuing this relationship if we don't have mutual trust. You're right. I understand that I need to change my attitude and make an effort for our relationship. I was just worried that you might not like our family, Teresa stammered, trying to justify herself. I love your son. I want to be his wife. But if you continue to not trust me and behave this way, then unfortunately, I won't be able to continue our relationship. Yes, you're right. Let's try again and make an effort to establish healthy, full-fledged relationships, an anxious Roberto interjected. But Magnolia didn't become a joy for Roberto. Quite suddenly, she had urgent matters to attend to at a charitable foundation, and the honeymoon had to be cancelled. She really hoped that Roberto would be upset. After waiting for a little while, and seeing Roberto clearly trying to placate her, complaining about the difficult situation he had lived in all his life, trying to play on her sympathy, she started acting herself. Magnolia decided to make life difficult for her husband, not only making him disillusioned with his plan to take her money through various deceitful methods, but also making him regret getting involved in all of this, assuming and calling Magnolia a fool who was easy to deceive. Gradually, Magnolia began to intentionally and ostentatiously spend enormous amounts of money on luxury in front of Roberto, idling around, and quite convincingly acting as if she weren't working at all. And, of course, she told all of this to her husband, who was ready to fret over every penny. Certainly, over time, Roberto became more suspicious when he realized that Magnolia wasn't fulfilling her marital duties at all, showed no interest in family responsibilities, and only cared about herself and her desires. Darling, is this a new car? Hiccuped Roberto when he saw the red convertible in front of the door. Oh yes, I thought, I afford it, right? Magnolia giggled foolishly. Of course, you can, Roberto sighed heavily. Magnolia was really hoping that the difficulties would lead to conflicts and tension in the relationship. She always kept a distance and completely separated Roberto from her family finances. 
the distrust and disappointment should gradually weaken the marital bond. Magnolia sent the household staff on temporary leave and told her husband that she had fired them all. This was another item on her list of taunts, to shift all the household chores onto Roberto. And to prevent any questions about why Magnolia couldn't take care of all this herself, she put on quite a show. Magnolia deliberately opened all the windows in the house and turned on the oven so that the repugnant odors spread as far as possible. She hoped that even outside the house, one could catch a whiff of the acrid smell of burning, and inside the house, there was a genuine smoky haze. Darling, I experimented a bit with flavors today. I hope you like my new culinary fantasy, Magnolia began to praise herself with a smile and seated her husband at the table. Sounds interesting. What did you cook? A hot pie with minced meat and vegetables, but I added a few extra spices. I hope they'll enhance the taste of herbs and make it really spicy. Try it. It's an appetizer. Magnolia pushed a crooked piece towards her husband. By looking at Roberto when he took the first bite, she understood that he had never tasted anything as nasty in his life. The pie was oversalted, overpeppered, and overly spicy all at once. It was impossible to figure out what ingredients were in there. And Magnolia watched with delight as her husband struggled to suppress a cough and gulp down water. Wow, it's really spicy and salty. But you know, I love spicy dishes, so it's not a problem. Roberto persistently pretended to enjoy it. Really? Well, great, I'm glad you like it. I was afraid I might have gone overboard with the seasonings. No, no, not at all, Roberto waved his hands. I like how you play with different flavors and experiment. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. I just wanted to cook something special for you. So, shall we move on to the main course? Magnolia's eyes lit up in anticipation. She knew there was no need to talk about the mysterious dish in the oven. Roberto initially poked around on his plate. There was definitely meat in there, which was undercooked and difficult to chew, and the potatoes were just as raw, crunching between his teeth. On top of it all was a burnt crust, sweetly covered with cream mixed with herbs. Magnolia herself didn't try her masterpieces, she blamed it on her diet. Not bad, Roberto stated. His conscience didn't allow him to lie even more. Magnolia noticed this and almost burst out laughing. You're not lying, are you? Everything's fine. Tell me more about your foundation. Roberto cut himself another tough piece, even scraping the plate with the knife. His stomach certainly didn't thank him for it. It's going well, Magnolia waved it off and changed the subject again. Would you like to have a second helping? No, thanks. I'm already looking forward to dessert, Roberto coughed. Dessert is here, Magnolia smiled and pulled out some murky substance in a transparent ramekin from the fridge. It was a pudding that dripped off the spoon back into the dish. It turned out the best. Roberto began praising the dessert while lumps of sugar crunched between his teeth. I'm full, thank you. Then tomorrow, I'll bake a broccoli pie with cream and spinach. You'll love it too. Magnolia exclaimed. Please don't stop. I love your culinary experiments, Roberto replied, almost in tears. Thank you, my dear. But Magnolia didn't forget about her own safety either, and every evening she added sleeping pills to her husband's coffee before bed. She would find it repulsive to sleep with him. The plan worked, and after broken vases, chairs with broken legs, and Magnolia's luxury shirts were ruined by Roberto, which were washed together with her red and blue blouses he took on household chores. He just couldn't stand living in such a mess. However, as time went on, the household responsibilities overwhelmed him, and he began to feel more and more unhappy. He handled cleaning, cooking, and laundry, but it was evident he was clumsy in performing these tasks, and Magnolia chuckled quietly. He had no cooking skills. His culinary experiments often ended in failure. Cleaning also caused some dissatisfaction. He had no idea how to handle a mop and a vacuum cleaner and quickly realized that his results were far from perfect. Despite his failures, Roberto tried his best. 
He got used to sleepless nights to manage all the household tasks, but fatigue began to catch up with him. Instead of embracing his own imperfections with understanding, he fell into deep psychological fatigue. He constantly felt pressure and stress, tried to meet the standards he had set for himself, and often complained to his mother that he could no longer dedicate time to his personal interests and relaxation. Magnolia overheard this conversation on the phone. Now Roberto was calling his wife a disgusting and untalented idler for anything she did. His participation in hobbies and sports events dwindled to a minimum, and he gradually lost his sense of joy and satisfaction. He felt only a sense of inequality and exhaustion, which slowly eroded his mood and family relationships. And at one point, Magnolia realized that he couldn't do anything precisely because he had been a true mama's boy who had been spoiled his whole life. He was very obedient and well-behaved only in front of Teresa, and he always followed his mother's instructions. He was a real pushover. But his mother was definitely a sly one, and Magnolia decided to talk to her lawyer again to avoid any risks. I'm afraid that Roberto and his mother will try to take away my inheritance more actively. I just can't let that happen. I need someone on my side, someone who will always help and protect me. Magnolia had to tell Salvador, the family lawyer who had been with her family for many years and whom Magnolia trusted unconditionally. I'm really sorry you're feeling this way, but I gave you a promise of help and protection. I'm always on your side, and I've done everything necessary to ensure that your inheritance rights are protected with a 100% guarantee, Salvador reassured her. But how can I be sure they won't find any loopholes to deceive me? Maybe they can come up with arguments or bypass legal restrictions. I understand your concerns, but I've been dealing with resolving such issues for many years. Do you think they're the first ones to try to get their hands on your estate? The lawyer smiled. I'm confident that my documents and agreements will protect you from any attempts at deceit or violation of your rights. Don't sign anything they offer you, and that's it. Thank you. I'm so glad you understand my worries and don't make fun of my fears, Magnolia blushed. It's really a huge relief to hear that you're on my side. I'm just afraid of losing everything. I have always been and will continue to be here to help you protect what's rightfully yours. You're not alone in this and you have a reliable and experienced lawyer who will keep a close eye on any changes or potential threats. Salvador patted her on the shoulder. It's so important for me to know that I can trust you completely. She leaned against his hand. In the beginning, Salvador, equally saddened by the loss of not only a client, but also a friend, became a replacement for Magnolia's father, uncle, and brothers. She found a shoulder to cry on in him. If any problems or questions arise, don't hesitate to come to me right away. Remember to show me any documents first before discussing them with your unpleasant relatives. I promised your parents to take care of you, and I will. Anyway, you'd better get a divorce soon. Very soon, reassured Magnolia. As Magnolia had anticipated, Roberto complained to his mother, and she rushed to the mansion to figure out why Magnolia, so-called the fool, was exploiting her son like that. Oh, Mom. I fired all the staff. I wanted to hire new ones, but right now, I've invested all the money in stocks. My lawyer advised me to do it this way. Maybe later, when we sell them, I'll be able to buy something or hire someone. Magnolia fluttered her eyelashes in response to accusations of laziness and ignorance. She never liked her mother-in-law, but she tolerated the woman because she loved Roberto. However, in reality, Teresa was the embodiment of evil and envy. She lived solely to control every aspect of her daughter-in-law's life and exploit her for her own interests. Every action of hers was filled with greed and a desire to take everything away from Magnolia. She was incapable of feeling joy at others' happiness, only getting angry at their well-being. The malice in her heart knew no bounds. She found satisfaction in causing pain and misery. Teresa began to regularly visit Magnolia's house, imposing her presence and attempting to bend everything to her will. So far, though, her attempts have been unsuccessful. 
She believed that since Roberto was now Magnolia's husband, she had the full right to control all daily affairs, every purchase, and every expenditure of money. Every word from Teresa was infused with envy and displeasure at her daughter-in-law's achievements. Perhaps it was the hardships of life that made her this way. Teresa herself had never been married. She felt strong jealousy towards Magnolia's successes and happiness. This woman was a prime example of a true villain, unable to accept that her daughter-in-law's life was beautiful and successful. But, as always, Magnolia was surrounded by the support of her friends. The girls met at a cafe. Hey, how are your revenge plans going? The friends asked Magnolia. I think I've found the perfect way to finally get rid of this horrible person. Roberto is at his breaking point, but his mommy isn't giving up. Magnolia was smiling. Tell us all the details. Well, you know, I've been thinking for a long time about how to truly outsmart him. And then this brilliant idea came to me. I want to subject him to a series of absurd and challenging tests so that in the end, he himself suggests a divorce, the girl giggled. Sounds interesting. What kind of tests have you come up with? Ricardo was intrigued. I started by gradually making small changes to his routine. For example, I rearranged folders with documents, moved his personal belongings to different places, and changed the order of clothes in the closet. I hope it drives him insane. And he's already tired of the domestic routine, he even complained to his mommy. Oh, that will definitely add a bit of chaos to his life, the friends laughed. I hope he will start wondering what's going on but that's just the beginning i want to slightly complicate the functioning of household electronic devices so they suddenly stop working and i'll scold him for breaking everything right now they think i've invested money in stocks and i don't have any for new devices good idea it sounds fun and irritating at the same time i would be furious ariel wrinkled her nose you've really thought everything through but how long do you plan to test him? Vitalia asked. Until he's so tired that he himself would suggest a divorce. I just can't endure his cruelty and unpleasant attitude towards me. Okay, but please be careful. But Magnolia didn't only receive support from her friends and family lawyer. Her beloved dogs also came to her aid, sensing the negative aura from Roberto, they became even more hostile towards him. Max and Leo had never particularly liked him, but as soon as he moved into Magnolia's house, they became furious. They were both incredibly loyal to their owners and defended their territory fiercely. Initially, Roberto's pet's behavior didn't frighten him. He always craved their recognition and friendship. However, combined with everything Magnolia had orchestrated, he also fell into a state of despair over this matter. Nothing was going according to his mother's plan. As soon as Roberto entered the house, Max and Leo would start barking nervously and acting as if they were worried about something. The situation was so funny Roberto tried to calm them down and befriend them, but the dogs regarded him with suspicion and continued barking. Gradually, life became a real trial. When Roberto woke up in the morning, the dogs treated him like a stranger and would defecate in his shoes or slippers. Every time Roberto tried to sit on the couch, Max and Leo wouldn't let him get close, barking and darting around, almost tripping him. They even tried to steal food from his plate when he wasn't looking. At one point, Roberto gave up on the idea of winning the animal's trust, almost surrendering and feeling worthless. Max and Leo ultimately triumphed in this battle. On the other side, it was Magnolia who was getting on his nerves. Darling, I recently invested a huge sum of money into charity. I'm so glad I could help those in need. She announced during dinner. What? What did you do? Roberto choked on his food. We agreed that I would use that money for our future investments. Really? When? Magnolia pretended to be clueless again. Even before the wedding. We decided that I could help you sort out your finances. There was absolutely no need to spend money on silly charity. Oh, right, we did discuss that. But when I saw how many people needed help, I couldn't stay indifferent. 
I visited several shelters, assisted a children's home, and even sponsored the education of a few talented students, Magnolia proudly declared. Roberto had become red from anger and got upset. Do you actually think these people appreciate your help? They're just people you can't trust. You could have put that money to better use, new properties or stocks. Why do you need this house if you're not taking care of it? Wouldn't it be easier to sell it and move into an apartment? Darling, for me, it's not just about material wealth, Magnolia theatrically expressed her offense. I want to do good and leave a mark in this world. Maybe instead of just caring about money, you could try doing something kind for others? No. That's not my task. My main occupation is managing our finances. I wanted to use that money to expand our opportunities, not to feed lazy people. Roberto shouted. Our money? Magnolia chuckled. Yes, we're married after all, Roberto retorted, standing up from the table. It's unfair. All people deserve support and help, especially those who find themselves in difficult life situations. I expected you to support me in this. Contrary to that, Magnolia remained incredibly calm, which further infuriated her husband. I don't understand your passion for charity. In our world, only the strongest survive, and I won't allow our money to fall into the wrong hands. It's my money, dear, Magnolia sarcastically replied. Is that so? I thought that since we're a family, everything is shared. After all, I earn a salary that we live on, Roberto snapped. You might only be capable of loving money, but I love people. I hope that someday you'll understand that there are more significant things than just seeking wealth, Magnolia fake tears. By the way, I've already registered us for a meeting with the director of the Charity Foundation, where we can see how our money is helping people. Maybe this will help you understand the importance of doing good deeds. Fine, I'll go to that meeting with you, Roberto softened when he saw her tears, but Magnolia didn't let herself be comforted. Maybe you're right, and I'm not seeing the bigger picture, but it still annoys me that you're making these decisions without my consent. I understand that we should discuss these things together. Forgive me, I just wanted to help and make the world a better place, she said. I'm not mad at you, but we should make future financial decisions together. At these words from her husband, Magnolia barely held back from cursing him. Of course, she understood perfectly well the kind of life he had envisioned marrying into when he decided to marry her and how profoundly he had been disappointed. He had wanted to dive into a world of unbridled luxury and unlimited possibilities. For him, a wealthy life probably meant travel opportunities, luxurious homes and cars, high-end fashion brands and accessories, access to elite establishments and clubs, and vibrant nightlife. He thought he would get all of this, have access to his infatuated and head-over-heels-in-love-with-him wife's accounts, and become rich, not just because of his wife's money. And then, once he had taken enough of her finances, he'd just divorce her. But instead of acquiring various services for himself, a personal chef, housekeepers, maybe even much more, a private jet to make his life more comfortable and carefree, he himself turned into a housekeeper, and to Magnolia's surprise, he started managing everything better and better. Wealth doesn't guarantee happiness and satisfaction in life. Truly wealthy people also face their problems and stresses. Their lives were complex and tense, and Roberto realized this fully. But Teresa wasn't willing to come to terms with it. And when she visited them once again, Magnolia witnessed an unpleasant and entirely immoral conversation. Roberto, I can't stay silent any longer. You just sit there and do nothing to claim your wife's inheritance. Why is this happening? Teresa spoke irritably. She refuses to cooperate, Roberto answered guiltily, lowering his head. You've played the role of a son wrong if you think your wife has more right to the family inheritance than you. You're her husband, after all. Teresa hissed like a snake. If I start arguing with Magnolia over money, it could shatter her fragile trust in me. But it's our family inheritance now. You should be strong and fight for it. How can you watch it slip away from us and do nothing? Why are you rushing like that? 
Everything needs to be done gradually, Roberto protested, but his mother quickly stopped him. What if she figures it out? You're a fool. There's no time to waste. I want you to understand that this is more than just about money. Mom, I understand your position, but there's nothing I can do, Roberto shrugged. I believe you'll find a way to resolve this situation in our favor, Teresa replied angrily, not wanting to hear her son. Family should always be the top priority, remember that. And Magnolia is nothing to us. But financial trials for Roberto didn't end there, because Magnolia was determined to prove to him how poorly he had treated her, her love, and her feelings. Additionally, for months, Magnolia maximized her efforts to avoid physical contact. She slept separately, went to bed earlier, and woke up later. Alongside this, she tried not to appear too attractive to push Roberto away. She often busied herself with tasks and work to keep away from him. She left little time for any displays of affection, not even minimal hugs. Over time, Roberto stopped trying. Magnolia began avoiding conversations with her husband about deep emotional matters to maintain distance. And to get on his nerves even more, Magnolia deliberately arranged things so that her husband overheard her phone conversation with a friend, discussing the idea of divorce and how she had made a mistake in choosing a partner, leading to discord in their relationship. And I've also decided to hire a private detective to expose Roberto's intentions. I think he's hiding something, Magnolia told her friend, confident that this information, overheard by her husband, would eventually reach the ears of his mother. Magnolia smiled as she looked in the mirror, thinking how confused and afraid her new relatives should have been. Darling, I was offered a role in a play for orphaned children, and I'll be playing the forest fairy. Could you help me rehearse? You could pretend to be a log and imagine we're in the woods? Magnolia enthusiastically started speaking as soon as Roberto, exhausted from a hard day's work, returned home. What? Do I have to lie on the floor with a log on my head? That's absurd, Roberto genuinely protested. Well, you always said you loved extravagant ideas. Here's your chance to show it. I didn't quite mean that when I talked about extravagant ideas. Can't we think of something less bizarre? Roberto squinted his eyes reluctantly. No, no, no. You promised you'd support all my ideas. Is it really that hard for you to help me? Magnolia stamped her foot. It was a joke. Did you really think I was serious? I won't make a fool of myself for your amusement. Oh, how brave you are of refusing your wife's desires, Magnolia said, placing her hands on her hips. Okay, if it helps to ease our tension, I'm willing to do this absurd trick. But we'll definitely watch soccer afterwards, alright? Roberto hesitantly suggested. Agreed, dear. And maybe you could give me a little massage after that or bring me a cup of coffee. Magnolia started absent-mindedly, opening her script for the role. What? I'm not your servant, Roberto exclaimed in horror. But you. Do you not love me? The girl sighed. Fine, all right. If it makes you happy, then I'll do it. Roberto finally lowered his head, admitting defeat. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, dear. You're the best husband in the world. Yes, I know I'm the best, Roberto chuckled. Then, the very next day, Magnolia went on a shopping spree with her husband's credit card. She bought a bunch of different items, a collection of rare plates, and a few very unusual musical instruments. Every time she received a delivery, she convinced him that it was just an investment for the future and that the collection would immediately increase in value. She started inviting random people into the house who were actually her good friends, introducing them as her new friends from the world of art and meditation teachers. And then she engaged in strange activities and practices. All of this eventually plunged Roberto into a state of constant nervousness. Hey, dear. How was your day at work? Magnolia flashed a fake smile when she returned home later. Hey, darling. The day was incredibly tough. I'm completely exhausted. Well, I just got back from the store, she said, cutting him off. I went shopping. 
I bought a new dress I've been wanting for so long and a few accessories. After shopping, I stopped by a restaurant. Oh, have you already prepared dinner? Well, you can eat alone, okay? Magnolia heard the pot drop to the floor from Roberto's hands. You know, having lunch at a restaurant after a tough day sounds like a great idea, Roberto began to ironize. Exactly. So after lunch, I decided to take a walk in the park. It was so beautiful and peaceful. Nature always calms me down. My eyes are already closing on their own from exhaustion. I'll probably go to sleep. Roberto took off his apron and was about to head to the bedroom. You're not even listening to me, Magnolia sniffled. I am. You know I love you. Then let's watch a movie together. Roberto wearily nodded at the suggestion, but as soon as the movie was halfway through, Magnolia pretended she was already sound asleep. After some time, Magnolia suggested they go on a vacation together to a small house by the sea. Roberto hoped this would be a new stage in their relationship. They chose a quiet resort to escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life. However, when Roberto opened his suitcase upon arrival, he found that all his clothes were child-sized. This was the last straw. Finally, Roberto realized that Magnolia had been playing a role too, the role of a wife getting back at her husband, and that she had suspected everything for a long time. Words were unnecessary here. Her laughter said much more in that moment. Good day, Roberto. I understand that you want to discuss your divorce and inheritance issue. Salvador immediately knew what Roberto's purpose was when he called. Good day, yes. That's exactly it. I would like to divorce Magnolia. We rushed into marriage. I'd like to discuss my rights regarding her inheritance, as I was her lawful spouse after all. I believe I'm entitled to some portion. Roberto settled into the chair across from the lawyer's desk. According to the law, only jointly acquired property is subject to division. You can receive a part of the inheritance only if your marital contract stipulates otherwise or if you've made a significant contribution to that inheritance, Salvador replied. But here. See, Roberto pointed to one of the clauses in the prenuptial agreement and handed it to the lawyer. It states that moral compensation is due for the inconveniences caused to one of the spouses during the marriage. But Salvador didn't even bother to look. Are you implying infidelity, physical harm, or something similar? He asked. No, Roberto slumped back into the chair. But I did contribute to our mutual well-being. I believe I'm entitled to a more generous part of this inheritance. Inheritance typically refers to personal assets and funds that an individual receives from their relatives or inherits from them. Being married is not a basis for obtaining a share of the inheritance unless explicitly stipulated in the documents. From Roberto's expression, it was evident that he hadn't expected such resistance. So you're telling me that I'm not entitled to anything? I've spent so much time supporting the family, and now I'm left with meager hopes for the future. I understand your confusion and disappointment, but my role here is to help you understand the legal aspects of divorce and inheritance. I'm losing all hope that Magnolia could have compensated me for all the mistreatment. But before Salvador could even respond, Teresa burst into his office. I just can't understand how this could happen. And now what? Here's the divorce, and my son will be left with nothing? Mother-in-law squealed. I invested a lot in this marriage too. Our social ties, our holidays, and everything that was part of our shared life. I also deserve to get my share. In the presence of Roberto's mother, he became a bit more resolute. Your share? What do you mean? Salvador pretended not to understand. When I saw her spending a ton of money on unnecessary things. I just can't understand how she could be so irresponsible with her own resources. Teresa huffed. But those were her own funds, Salvador shrugged. I just can't come to terms with the fact that she can squander all her savings in an instant, the mother-in-law pretended to worry. I'm afraid that's not your decision to make, but Salvador remained steadfast. And the things I bought for her? Roberto interjected. 
I'll give you money for those, don't worry. I was well aware of your plans from the very beginning, even back at the church. You could have at least discussed it more quietly. Leave before I get angry, Magnolia suddenly responded, emerging from the hidden room, having heard the entire conversation. What? What is she doing here? Teresa recoiled. I'm defending my honor, and I don't want to see you anymore. Magnolia raised her voice in response. I'm convinced she's cheating on my son. All signs point to it. And the prenuptial agreement mentions compensation for infidelity. What makes you think that about your future daughter-in-law? The lawyer smirked. Here's a photo I found on her phone. Look, she's embracing another man, Teresa said, showing a paper photo. Allow me to take a look. Salvador took the photo and, lowering his glasses, began to scrutinize it. I understand why this worries you, but I'm confident it's a photo montage. A montage? Why do you think that? Teresa's gaze darted around the office. Firstly, it's just one photo without any additional evidence. And secondly, today's technology allows for very realistic photo manipulations. People can easily alter photos to create a false impression. A proper analysis will confirm it. Upon hearing the lawyer's response, Teresa snatched the photo from Salvador's hands and promptly tore it apart. I can't believe someone could do this to us. So what should I do? I want to protect my son. For example, don't try to claim what doesn't belong to you. I don't think you want serious legal proceedings, so yes, it's better for you to just leave. And this time, Teresa lost her ability to speak. In the end, Roberto gave up on his idea, which had long lost its meaning and significance for him. He instantly realized that Magnolia was far from naive, as he had assumed. She had manipulated both him and his mother. All of his meticulously devised plans, executed with precision to deprive her of her inheritance, became empty and futile. Magnolia was well aware of all his intrigues and petty games, while she masterfully taunted his weaknesses and flaws. She saw his hidden intentions and decided to protect herself. Roberto vividly realized he had become a pawn in her hands. He was just a puppet in her skillful game, where every move and every step was subject to her will. Magnolia relished in his desire to control, entertain, and mock him. He was the object of her sarcasm and laughter, while his dignity and self-respect were constantly undermined. But finally, the moment came when the humiliation became unbearable. He decided to escape from this oppressive situation, disregarding his mother's advice and realizing he could no longer be a part of this game. Slamming the door shut, he left the lawyer's office, taking his mother with him. Meanwhile, Magnolia's life finally started to improve. She quickly managed to let go of this unpleasant situation and decided to do something special to celebrate her divorce from her husband. Knowing that the sea was a favorite place not only for her, but also for her dear friends, who had always been by her side, Magnolia decided to go there with Ariel, Ricarda, and Vitalia. She decided to organize this trip as lavishly as possible. She rented a spacious villa by the sea, an incredibly luxurious and comfortable house with a stunning view of the beach and the endless blue sea. Here, they could enjoy the highest level of relaxation. She also arranged a small yacht party to celebrate her release from the marriage, where they could dance, revel in the magnificent views, and celebrate the new chapter in Magnolia's life. The friends laughed, danced, and twirled to the wonderful music. They experienced joyful moments together, celebrating their friends' radiant happiness in recent times. Despite the concerns they had shared with each other, they decided that nothing should dampen their spirits. They made an effort not to dwell on their problems and simply enjoy the moment. The sounds of laughter and dancing echoed far beyond the deck, and everyone around could not help but notice that these four friends were truly close and happy together. But most importantly, this trip helped foster the friendship between Magnolia and her friends. This situation became a symbol of a new beginning for Magnolia, the day when she finally freed herself from the past and was ready for a new future. No one could tell that Magnolia had gone through numerous difficulties as she was having a blast and rejoicing in each new day. 
She realized that life could be challenging and unpredictable, but it was these moments of happiness and support that made her significant and memorable. Girls, a toast to our strong and genuine friendship. We've been through so much together. Ariel raised her cocktail glass. You're right. Remember how we used to watch sunsets by the sea when we first came here to university? Just close your eyes, and in our thoughts, we haven't changed at all, Vitalia chimed in. And remember that night when we sat in this bar until morning, talking about our dreams and plans? Cheers to our big dreams. Continued Ricarda. And no obstacle can stop us. We will always support each other and fight for what we believe in. To our unyielding strength. Magnolia concluded. To our strong and genuine friendship. To everything we've experienced and will experience together. The girls shouted in unison. The sea at sunset looked absolutely magnificent, tranquil and serene. The sun dipped into the azure waters, creating fiery shades on the horizon, turning clouds into pink drops of melted gold. Lush clouds spread across the sky like delicate veils, lending a tender quality to the seascape. The reflections of the sunset danced in every wave, painting delicate golden stripes within them. Everything around me fell silent to fully savor this moment and the incredible beauty of nature. In that instant, Magnolia finally let go and immersed herself in a world of harmony and tranquility, causing her heart to melt with happiness at the beauty of the surrounding world. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.